we can already tell that the fleece is too much for right now. So before we get started, I'm going to shed a layer. Hey everyone, it's Susan with the Outdoor Gear Review and today I'm out for a Susie solo. That's right, today it is just me. I've come out to the back country, grabbed myself a camp spot and we're gonna head there and camp tonight. It's a beautiful spring day. There's no chance of rain and I'm really excited about the afternoon and the evening. It should be a gorgeous night. I've already gotten my permit so I can keep my car in the parking lot tonight and I filled out all the paperwork that I needed to. I'm gonna head down and check out the river that runs by the trail. I don't get to follow the river all of the trail and I won't be camping by the river, but it's a gorgeous day. The water's really calm. So let's check it out before we hit the trail and start hiking to camp. We have temps in the 50s. Tonight it will be low 30s. And tomorrow we are looking about the same. So it's a gorgeous spring day. Spring has arrived and it's nice to be able to get out and do some spring backpacking. I love temps like this because you can bring your layers and it gets chilly in the evenings and a little chilly at night. But as soon as the sun pops out, it warms up and it feels great. We are now on the trail getting started to our campsite. I have about two miles in to hike to for today. And as I'm getting started, I'm getting hot very quickly. So I'm thankful that there's a slight breeze today in the air. I'm at a state park in Western North Carolina in the mountains. And I like to camp at state parks, especially if they offer a backcountry. I'm able to do some hiking, get a camp spot that is usually secluded. I feel like you get a little bit more solitude versus a campground. And I also like that this state park has a locking gate. So I think at eight o'clock at night or maybe nine, they lock the gate so the parking lot is secure. And that makes me feel better about just leaving my car overnight. You do have to take that into consideration when choosing a spot. You need to check the surrounding areas, trust your gut, get a feeling about it, and that should determine if you're going to stay there in camp and leave your vehicle. I took a break to check the sign for the backcountry and it looks like I have 1.5 miles left to go before I reach my campsite. And according to my watch and tracking, I've already done about a mile. So I think the mileage is a little bit off what's listed online for this area. I also noticed under their rules and tips that they recommend that you carry out all of your waste, including toilet paper, things like that for the bathroom. It says that they prefer for people to use wag bags which are bags that you can buy with waste alleviating gel inside for when you have to use the bathroom. And I think that is becoming more and more common as more people are getting out. Our state parks and trails, they really do need people to carry out all of their trash, including toilet paper. It's something that I do on every trip. It's not that hard to do, it just takes a little bit of extra work. But I think what we're gonna see is that you need to stop burying it and just pack it out. As I'm climbing my way up the mountain, I've come to a wet weather spring, and I have been to this state park once before with Luke, and when we were here, there were no water sources at all. So it goes to show you that you can't always count on that, and that is why I packed all my water with me for the trip. There is a little bit of water, not very reliable, because as I head up the mountain, I see that it's dried up completely. Just depends on the time of year that you're here, what you will find.
We are back hiking alongside the river and it's a short distance away from me, but I hear the water. So as soon as the trail up here meets with another trail, I'm gonna go check it out this time since I'm not camping directly by the water. There is a campground here and there are camping spots that are on the river, but I'm heading more into the back country. But as you know, I love to go explore. So as soon as I see the opportunity, we'll go check out the water. I found the trail that goes into the campground. And since no one is here, I have the entire park to myself. We're gonna hike down here so I can get a closer look at the river. It is such a gorgeous day. I feel so thankful and lucky that I can be out taking advantage of it today. It's so quiet. There's nobody else here. It is excellent. This is the new river behind me and there are many sources online that says it's one of very few rivers that flow north. I've even heard that it's the only river in the United States that flows north, but I'm not sure if that is true. Either way, it is a beautiful river. It is very popular. People love to kayak. There are camping spots that you can only get to by kayaking or canoeing in. There's a lot of fishing opportunities. There's a lot of recreation alone with just the river. And in fact, this morning before I left the house, I was checking the news and they pulled a body from the new river. I do not know the details, but it said they did not think foul play was suspected. And I would suspect with the recent rains that we had, maybe the waters were just up and someone may have drowned. But again, I'm not sure. It's a beautiful river and the water is gorgeous. I could not help but sneak down here and check it out. had a nice break at the river and I wish I could have stayed longer but the bugs were really bad down there by the water so I'm back on trail and it is time to get to camp I haven't mentioned what I'm doing special with this trip but I will go ahead and tell you that it's something to do with what I'm eating tonight so I won't say anything else we'll talk more about it when I get to camp And I have made it into my camp spot. I'm so happy. It is much hotter than what was forecasted. So I am hot and sweaty. I'm ready to take a small break, but we made it. The reason I wanted to come back here is because I knew there would be a great view. I can see the river. The leaves have not popped out yet. So it was perfect timing to come back to this place and camp here. Whew, I'm ready for a break. is ready for coffee and the jet boil did that really fast but to be honest I'm having some issues with it when I took out my gas canister to attach it and get it started I could not get it to ignite so I had to use my lighter you know the jet boil is a new piece of gear that I got um, it wasn't really cheap to be honest so I am a little bit bothered that it's not working correctly Cheers everybody Oh, nice and hot.
The silence here at this campsite is amazing. We are out in the country, so I hear like the roar of a tractor way off in the distance, but no people, nothing. Hear a few birds, it's really nice. And this orange isn't bad either. My coffee break is over and I'm looking around my camp because the next thing I wanna do is get my tent set up for the evening. And because the fire pit is set up in the middle of my campsite, I've decided I'm gonna put my tent over here. It is closer to the trail and not something that I would normally choose to do, but I wanna be far away from the fire and this place is not busy. There's nobody out here. I have the entire state park to myself. I haven't seen a single person today. Let's head over here. This is where I'm gonna be setting up my tent. So the reason I'm choosing over here, far away from the fire, is that I really wanna protect my gear. It is a breezy evening. The winds could pick up later. I don't want an ember to blow out and melt the fly on my tent. So giving myself some distance is the best thing to do. I have the ultralight ground sheet from Mountain Laurel Designs and tonight I will be using the Nature Hike Mungar 2 tent. It is this nice and bright purple color. This is my purple palace for tonight. That's what we're gonna call it, the purple palace. I mean, can you tell me the last time that you've seen a purple tent? It is purple. I don't even like purple. Just kidding, I love purple. And I really love this tent. For my sleeping pad, I have my usual Thermarest X-Therm sleeping pad. I use this on every single trip that I do. I have with me my zero degree bag from Go Light. They do not make this anymore, but for me, a zero degree bag works even though the temps will be in the 30s tonight. It could possibly go lower, but I don't really expect it to. I know that I sleep cold and that I'm a cold person, so a zero degree bag, even in 30 degree weather, works for me. I do have different bags and things for my hygiene. I have a power bag and a clothing bag. I also have a miscellaneous kit which contains a first aid kit if I need it. I have so much space inside of this tent and it is really nice. So I'm just gonna unpack everything and that will be it. I've been trying to mention all the gear that I brought along with me on this trip. And I wanted to mention even the clothes that I'm wearing because everybody wants to know what are you using and what do you take out with you? But I also want to remind everyone that gear is not a one size fits all thing. Gear is individual specific. So what works for me may not work for you. I don't want you thinking you can go out and if you take a zero degree bag, you may be too hot when you're sleeping and you'll be like, oh, Susan told me wrong. So please feel free to email me if you have questions, but know that what works for me may not work for you. So for my clothing, this is a merino wool shirt from Decathlon. My pants are the Sightscape convertible roll-up pants from Eddie Bauer. I just got these in about a month ago, and I do like the fit of these pants. They roll up to a capri length so I can get some air with them. And I think that's important when the temps start warming up to have some convertible pants. That way when you get too warm, you're able to get some air. If I have forgotten any gear or you're not sure, just send me an email or a message and I'll be happy to help you out. I am making a feather stick, which I will use to start my fire. Next up, I will be collecting firewood. As I mentioned earlier, I have a special treat for tonight, and what I'm doing is doing all of my cooking by the campfire. I'm super excited to share with you guys what I'm making. I'm not gonna tell you yet, but it is time to start collecting firewood.
Anyway, I put some big pieces of wood on the fire. I wanna have those big embers, the big coals. Those are perfect for cooking. This is something that Luke had in his gear room. It is fairly heavy, but not too bad. And it unfolds and will give me a grill grate cooking surface. The legs are adjustable, so that's pretty handy. I hear all the time from many, many viewers about backpacking meals having too much sodium. And I agree but the fact is that backpacking meals were made for really active individuals. And that's the reason they contain so much sodium. Ugh. If you're hiking all day and sweating, you would be fine consuming that. I know a lot of people have health issues and they really have to watch their sodium intake. So I'm gonna try some campfire meals that are not backpacking meals. It's not out of a package. I have two recipes for tonight and in the morning I have another one for breakfast. Let's give it a try and see how it goes. I will be making a pita campfire pizza. I'm gonna be using aluminum foil and making a packet, so to speak, and cooking right over the coals. So when you wanna cook out and you're backpacking, all your ingredients are fresh, so you have to keep that in mind, and I had to carry a few extra items. I did all of the prep work at home, though, and that will save me some time, and I didn't have to bring as much, and I won't have to pack out as much trash since I did that. My pizza is going to be pretty basic. We're going to do sauce, cheese, peppers, onions, pepperoni, bacon. It's going to be delicious. So far the pizza is cooking and the cheese is melting really nicely around the edges. I grabbed some extra tin foil to make a dome for the top of the pizza so I can get more heat to make it melt all across. This is the first time I've done anything like this so it is an experiment but it's working out good. I'm super excited about this. It smells good. I can hear everything sizzling. At the end of this fire I'm gonna have a cheesy mess. That's gonna be pizza and it's gonna be good. It is almost time for me to take the pizza off. It's melted perfectly, it smells good, and it looks good. But I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my dessert. So I'm using the same concept of cooking in aluminum foil, and I'm gonna be making cookies. I'm gonna prepare it in the foil, and when I take my pizza off, I'm gonna go ahead and throw those directly on to the wood and let them cook about seven minutes on each side. We'll see how it turns out. My fingers are crossed because I really want a cookie after my pizza. Tell me that doesn't look good. Here we go. Mm. That is so good. Oh my goodness. This pizza tastes so good and I'm so happy it worked out. I wasn't sure what to expect. I didn't want it to get really burnt or hard and the pita crust worked really well to make the pizza. I'm really happy with how this turned out. What are some of your favorite meals to cook over a campfire? Share them down below with me as I would love to try more meals like this in the future. It really wasn't that hard. It was fairly easy and I'm gonna look up more recipes to try. Dinner was delicious, but unfortunately my cookies did not work out well. So I thought I hit start for the timer on my watch and I was too busy enjoying my pizza and watching the sun go down. I forgot about them and they burned. If you enjoyed this, please let me know. Let me know some recipes you like. This has really inspired me and motivated me to find different things to cook while out and not rely on a meal out of a bag. 
There's nothing wrong with that if you do like those. I'm a fan of them myself. I'm all about making things easy. As I sit here and enjoy the fire, I was thinking about what story I could share with you guys. And this is a good chance when I'm on these solo trips for you to get to know me better. And I wanna share a fun story and a fun memory that I have with my mom. It's been about six and a half years ago since I lost my mom. She passed away from cancer. And my mom was a really, really wonderful lady. And I miss her all the time. I miss her so bad. But a really cool memory that we have together is in the late 90s, my mom and I got to go to Mexico. My mom was able to go with me and it was a huge first for her and for me. It was the first time we got on an airplane and took a flight somewhere. It was the first time for many things. We got to see so many unique and different things about Mexico. We got to visit some Mayan ruins and pyramids and we really had a great time. And I'm so lucky that I have that awesome memory with her and that we were able to do that together. My mom was the type of person that she was very content with her life and she did not travel very much at all. Mexico was a very big deal for her. And there's a lot of things that I've got to do in my lifetime that she never got to do. I've been very lucky that Luke and I have been able to explore and we are going to be doing some more exploring here in a few weeks. I think it's great when you can be content with your life and content with where you are. But if you have the opportunity to get out there and explore and try new things and see new things, I really think you should do it. And the summary of my story is life is short. My mom was certainly not old when she passed away and it weighs on me sometimes. You know, life is short. You need to get out there and do what you wanna do and see what you wanna see. And if you're content, that's okay too. There are a million different ways to do things. Just like with adventure, it's unique to that individual. It's nice to be out here tonight and to think about things like that and just enjoy the fire and be alone with my thoughts. I'm inside of the tent, I'm all ready for bed, and I'm gonna call it a night. I am tired, but the night has been perfect. The campfire lasted a while. I burned all my wood that I collected. This adventure has been a ton of fun. I've enjoyed myself tremendously the entire time. There's absolutely nothing to complain about. It is so quiet out. I'm not expecting anything to happen tonight except just peacefulness and quiet. I have a feeling I'm gonna sleep good. I will see everybody in the morning and we will cook up some breakfast and enjoy some coffee. Hopefully the sun is up and it's a nice warm day. Good night everybody. Good morning everybody. I'm waking up here. I actually already have gotten out of the tent because I had to go use the bathroom and it is really not that cold. It is in the 40s, just a little bit chilly. The sun is up. It's about 8 o'clock in the morning. When I'm out camping, I'm definitely one of those people that sleep a lot. I can turn in early, no problem, and even though I tried to wake up a little bit earlier, it didn't work. It's about 8, so... I'm going to get ready, get my face on, get dressed, and head out so I can make some coffee. It's a beautiful morning though. The river is gorgeous down there. But yeah, the night was peaceful. Nothing to report. Very quiet. I slept great. I slept hard. So yeah, let's get this day started.
The good thing about the jet boil this morning is that I started looking at it last night and realized that the igniter was bent a little bit. I was able to mess with it and I just fired it up as a test run and it worked perfectly. So I think my jet boil is back in working condition, which makes me very happy. You can store the gas canister and the stove part inside the pot and there's a chance that it got bent that way. So I think for future references, I will keep my fuel canister separate from the jet boil. Like I said earlier, I'm glad that it's working like it should, but I would say that this stove is a little bit clunky. You have to figure out how to attach the pot in a smooth way, make sure you light it before attaching the pot, and so on. Anyway, I think I'm getting the hang of it. I do like it. There are many versions of the jet boil, and I've heard that there's a new lighter weight version called the stash, but I've heard that the reviews are not so great that it doesn't work that great. I don't know. For now, I am happy with my Minimo jet boil. Let's make coffee. Cheers everybody. Thanks for joining me on this trip and uh, sticking around. This morning I'm gonna be cooking some eggs in the jet boil and adding all my toppings that were left over from my pizza. I'll be making a scramble of sort. We'll have bacon, we'll have onions, peppers. I'll throw in some seasoning and all the leftover cheese. So I'm a big cheese fan. I'm gonna make cheesy eggs. It's gonna be delicious. My eggs are finished, but I left them in the pot with the lid on it so the cheese can melt and it will be ooey and gooey within a few minutes. Oh, they're ready. Wow. Do you guys see this cheese? That's some cheesy goodness right there. Well, here we go with the first bite. Cheesy egg scramble. That is really good. This is something I make at home all the time. Cheesy eggs, throw in onions and peppers and bacon. You can really throw in anything that you want. Makes a good, simple breakfast. So that was fun to be able to make it out on the trail. Fresh eggs are way, way better than like the powdered eggs. So this tastes a lot better than some of the meals that are in packages that have eggs. For now, I'm just gonna eat and drink my coffee. Enjoy the morning. I'm sitting here eating and I can tell that it's getting chillier. Looking out across the mountain, you can tell that the fog is rolling in. So there may be some weather headed my way. I think for now I'm gonna finish up breakfast and start packing up. Breakfast is over and cleaning up around camp has started. I'm quickly going to use water, heat it up in the pan, use my paper towel, wipe everything down the best that I can. Since I'm leaving today, I don't have to worry about things being perfect, and when I get home, I will do a good cleanup with all of my gear. And that's it everybody, I'm packed up and ready to hit the trail. I have about 2.5 miles back to the car. It is cloudy, still chilly, but I should warm up nicely. Most of the trail is downhill, so lucky for me, I won't have too much work this morning. I've checked around camp, everything's picked up and we are good to go. I'm back on the trail, hiking down to the car and my backpack is considerably lighter. I don't know by how much, but all my food is gone and most of my water, I only have a small amount left. I had such a fantastic time on this solo trip and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. It's pretty much hiking back to the car and you guys have seen it all, so I'm gonna beat my feet and get back there 
Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed my Susie solo. I'm gonna start planning my next one and I will see you guys on the next adventure. Strength and honor, bye. Fuck that.